your reputation is excellent. And I don't think anyone can debate the fact that you're a New York Times bestseller, one of the top public intellectuals, etc. Is it that you're choosing not to go on TV so much and that might be a perfectly fine choice as an author? Or or uh, are you not getting invited much? Hmm. Um, so the, the short answer is pretty much not getting invited. Um, and it's very different than what happens to me. You know, when I was in the UK for the Labor Party conference this past week, I was on all of the flagship news shows um, on TV. Um, you know, not to say that these were softball interviews, but uh, but but I absolutely have access to the most mainstream television audiences, not just in the UK, but you know, in in many countries. Um, and the US is. Is markedly different, um, and actually, it's getting worse. I'll be honest with you. Um, I have to also be honest with you about something, which is that I do hate doing television. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it's it's one of my least favorite things, but I I agree with you that it is incredibly important. Um, so, uh, you, you know, we really did try with this book, and 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 I we had we had less luck with this book, with No Is Not Enough, than with my previous, with any of my previous books, with The Shock Doctrine, with This Changes Everything, um, there's less space. Because I think part of what's happened is the MS MSNBC is so much in the anti-Trump, it's all about Russia, Camp and my analysis is no. It's about you know we have to look at how both political parties produce this moment. Looking at Trump not as this aberration, but as a culmination, as a logical outcome of a system that cannot just be blamed on Republicans. And that's not a message that is particularly interesting um, in this moment to, uh, uh, on MSNBC. So I used to be able, I used to get on there a lot more um, when I had a book co coming out. Um, and, and now, you know, I, I don't seem to fit in any of the boxes. But the interesting thing is that this book has done better despite not being on TV, right? Um, because I think we have so many different ways of reaching each other now. So whether it's podcasts, social media, viral videos, people people are getting the message. My concern is that it's it, you know it, there is this slight preaching to the choir element where we're we're able to reach the people who are already on side better than we ever have. But in terms of having conversations across divides, right? Forget Republican versus Democrat divides, but just within the divides, um, you know, uh, you know, on the so-called left side of the political spectrum. And I'm not sure, you know, when we're talking about mainstream Democrats that I, I would even say they're on that side. But you know, I when you know when Joanne Reed sent out that tweet, right? Where, where she said that you know um, Bernie supporters uh, are like the the guy who comes to your apartment, sleeps on your couch, and ruins your aesthetic. Um, you know, I I very rarely engage in you know Twitter warfare, but I just politely tweeted back. You know, I'd like to come on your show and debate this, and I think it was retweeted you know eleven thousand times or something. But I never heard back from the show. Right? Really? And this is when my book was number two on the New York Times bestseller list. So come on. You know, it's absolutely ridiculous. And this, you know, this, I think this can only be seen as, you know, a, a, a de facto form of censorship. We have to have these debates. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I promised I wouldn't ruin her aesthetic, but to no end.